Hello everyone, I am Adam and thank you for joining me for another D&D Beyond development update and community Q&A session. We're going to jump right in where I can leave as much time for questions as possible. As always, we're going to go through latest updates, upcoming work that we are doing uh, across all the D&D Beyond teams, and then getting to the aforementioned questions. If you have a question, ask that in chat prefacing it with the word question. I think that makes sense. So do that in the chat and we will be collecting those and I will get to as many as I can at the end of the stream. So latest updates complete. We have released D&D Beyond entitlements into Avery. That means that anything that you have purchased and unlocked on D&D Beyond is now available to use within our Avre Discord bot. And we're gonna look at some of that here in just a little while. You've got to link your account to make it happen. And then you uh, link, do some linking inside of Avre itself, but you can pull in your character. And again, you can look up things that are non-SRD at this point in time. So this is released for everyone. It was a release to subscribers last time I gave you the update, but uh, this is a, a really, really big step and something that we've been excited to do with Avery for some time. It is the world's most popular Discord bot, and it really is very powerful. And so if you're playing online remotely right now during all of what's going on in the world, Avery is a great tool for you to check into, and it would be a great skill for you to pick up in, in the middle of uh, some of the sheltering in place. We also released the Unearthed Arcana playtest content for the Phantom Rogue, the Genie Warlock, and the Order of Scribes Wizard this week. So check those out. Those are, uh, it, that's been a very popular batch of Unearthed Arcana. So I think that uh, we're seeing a lot of characters already being created with those three subclasses. So you check that out as well. And then I wanted to provide an update about some of the Wizards of the Coast content that is on the site. So we received some communication from Wizards this week regarding some of the Extra Life and Adventures League type content that we have on D&D Beyond. And ultimately, uh, I think the quickest way to explain this is that there are uh, products that are gonna go through the full-blown robust design process that is going to typically culminate in a hardcover. And then there are some products that don't go through as rigorous of a process as that. And so on d, &D Beyond, we are going to be differentiating between those two types of content and uh, leaving something. We have something called source categories. You might not always know about this because these are the categories that you check at the very first screen of character creation where we have options like critical role content, magic, the gathering content, Rick and Morty content, and so on. So with all of those options, there is a source category that is called core D&D that you never see about because core D&D is always enabled no matter what by default. And so we've got core D&D and we're going to be moving those Extra Life products, and then uh, some of the Adventures League content that we have out there. Uh, an example of this is Rachma that was associated with Morgan Kanan's Tome of Foes. But those bits of content are going to be moved into a category called Non-Core D&D. I want to emphasize that for everyone out there, this content is still perfectly accessible. It is still going to be uh, on your accounts if you've unlocked them. Nothing is going to change with that. Nothing's going to change with, um, you know, your ability to access them with characters or anything like that. This is just a clarifying step that Wizards of the Coast has asked us to take to make sure that new players are maybe not confused by any of those options. So, for instance, I believe there's a spell that is in uh, the Lost Laboratory of Qualish called Flock of Familiars. I may be uh, getting the source there wrong, but Flock of Familiars is still going to be available on your account for D&D Beyond and everything else. It's just simply as a new player is coming into the game and creating their character for the first time, that non-core D&D source category will by default be turned off. So those kind of spells will not appear for 
the general new player who is coming in and just trying to get started quickly into the game. But if you want that content in your game, you're perfectly able to do so by toggling the uh, source category on as you're creating a character and then all of those options are fully available to you. So hopefully that was not too boring, but I wanted to give a little bit of a heads up on that process that's going to be happening uh, here very, very soon. We will have some additional messaging about that when it comes out. Main thing to emphasize, there really is very little impact uh, to, to you and any characters that are using this content. The main thing is you're going to have to possibly toggle that on in order to have those options available to you to pick when you're managing your spells or whatever else. So that is one update that I wanted to share with you today. And then class feature variants, we are working on this. The team's been uh, having execution meetings and talking about a lot of the minutia that uh, we're, we're going to have to get into with this entire system. But we're really excited to uh, start coding on this effort, and we're going to provide more updates as soon as we have a little more clarity on when this is going to be available for all of you. I want to talk about Avre just a little bit. So we're going to look at Avre here too. We'll go over to Discord here. Um, and so I've, I'm on the development Discord for Avre right now, and I've got a special channel set up that all of this is going to be happening in. But I wanted to show you a few things with Avre. So let's go back to D&D Beyond, actually. That's where I really want to be. So uh, I'm not going to show you my account right now because I can't remember what's on that screen and I don't want my phone number being revealed and then everyone calling me during the dev update. Uh, but uh, you can go into your account settings and link your Avre or your Discord account with your D&D Beyond account. And once that step is in place, you can go to your characters, we will grab Briv Steel Marrow here. And just so, so I can show another bit of this, I'll go to the shareable link here. So this is something that will get you a shareable link, give you a nice uh, open graph image when you post that on social and everything else. But then you can go into Avre, and I hope that I remember this right, Beyond, and then paste that character URL. So that's all it takes, uh, exclamation point beyond, paste the character URL. And Avre will actually load that character into, um, into this. So let's see, yes, I already loaded this. So... Oh, we're gonna pause for just, okay, we're good now, I guess. So since I had already linked Briv in this channel, it was asking me whether I wanted to update or not. I had to uh, type yes in there, but you're going to see now that Briv Steel Marrow and all of his magical metal glory is here in Avre. You've got all of, uh, you know, kind of a stat block for your character here. So really, really handy. And then from here, you can do a variety of things. So I can do exclamation point attack. And then I know that Briv has uh, a weapon called Arsenal. And so if I do that, I'm, it's going to actually roll an attack roll for me and then roll damage at the same time. And then it's going to talk about the weapon that I did that with. So really, really handy. You can do uh, exclamation point check and uh, say Briv is good at athletics. So that's what we're gonna try here. So we got, uh, I got an 18 on that, not bad, about average for Briv anyway. Um, and you can also, uh, let's see, Briv casts some spells. So we will cast, uh, let's see, exclamation point cast. Uh, let me think of one that he actually has prepared right now. So we're gonna say Guiding Bolt. So he's going to cast Guiding Bolt. So you'll see that it rolls the two hit, it rolls the damage, it reminds you of the effect of the spell. It also shows you how many spell slots you still have left available. 
So with that, uh, I actually had not taken a long rest from playing last night. I've used up three of my four first level spell slots. If I wanted to uh, just reset all of that, um, I can long rest. I forget how how that what that command is. Oh, I think I did it right. Yeah. So uh, that's going to reset all of uh, my spell slots there. So uh, ultimately, really, really handy, really easy. I can also just randomly look up things that I need to while I'm in the game. So exclamation point spell is going to, uh, if I do, let's do, uh, I think branding smite is a non-SRD spell. So we can look up branding smite very easily there too. So, uh, so yeah, really, uh, really fun to be able to find all of that quickly and easily. We will say uh, item, alchemy, jug. I don't know why anybody would want to use an alchemy jug since it produces mayonnaise, but, um, but there is an alchemy jug here. So again, really handy to have, even if you're not playing remotely, this is something that you can have pulled up on Discord and you can look up these things very quickly and easily. It puts it out in a very digestible format. Let's say monster. What kind of monster do I want to do here? We'll go with an oldie, but a goodie. So here is our beholder. And as you can see, pulls in the image, pulls in the uh, you know, statistics and all of this. Now I'm not going to get into it today, but you can also run an initiative order here. You can track combat. You can go through a turn order, uh, and all sorts of things in Avre. So hopefully we've, uh, can get our moderators to share some of those links to Avre.io. You can add that to your server. There are also some, uh, quick start, uh, just jumping right into thing, uh, things, guides out there that uh, hopefully we can share in chat. But yes, very fun stuff that has come to Avre, especially now that your unlocked d and uh, Beyond content is available in our Discord bot. Check it out. Also a reminder, the time is getting shorter and shorter. We're here at the 21st of May. And so, we are getting closer to the June 2nd digital release of Mythic Odysseys of Theros, still the best named D&D uh, &D 5th edition supplement at this point, in my humble opinion. But if you find a Wizards Play Network store out there, one of your local game stores, there are 3,000 plus of these in North America. If my numbers are right there, I think they are. And the first 20 people who pre-order at their local store are going to receive a code. The codes have already started going out. Uh, so if you've pre-ordered, you should hopefully be getting your codes out there. But it will get you 50% off on the D&D Beyond version of this book. And that's the lowest price that any supplement's been, except for the other 50% off bundling we were able to do in the Essentials Kit for the Player's Handbook. So really, really big deal and uh, go take advantage of this to support your local stores and to get a great deal on the digital version here on D&D Beyond. Upcoming, so we are working towards our initial public release of the player mobile app. So to this point, we have been in alpha testing. This has been with a set group of people that are participating through test flight. And I can't remember what the Android version of that is called, but it has not been officially in the app stores, but we are getting very close to that being the case. And we're looking forward to everyone being able to get their hands on this app that's going to let you play your characters on the character sheet in a native mobile application and very importantly, let you play those characters offline. So really exciting, and it is coming very soon. And then Digital Dice Public Beta is also coming very soon. So I wanted to give a little bit of an update. We have received a ton of feedback within the alpha. Hundreds of thousands of people are rolling dice out there, which uh, is, is really interesting to look at all of the data going on there. 
I might do a data update here in the coming weeks on just, you know, what some of the distribution of uh, all the rolling has been. But anyway, we'll, we'll see what we can uh, round up with all of that. But with Digital Dice, we are going to be focusing on three really primary elements here for the alpha into beta. So as we're continuing our testing here, the major elements that we're going to be focusing on is we have heard the uh, pain points with the styling on uh, that the dice provide. Again, we wanted to start here because we wanted you all to understand where you needed to click in order to make dice rolling happen. And uh, so we're you know trying to tweak some of the onboarding and shepherding there, but ultimately we will get a, uh, a way for you to disable some of the uh, you know boxes around the elements and the blue and, and that kind of thing and make it much more streamlined and make it to where you don't have to scroll in your skills section and make it to where the look and feel of the sheet that I know is uh, you know something that people really, really like and enjoy out there where it is minimally impacted in order to let you continue to roll the dice. So that's one thing that we're gonna be doing for some reason, I am completely forgetting the uh, second major, oh, advantage and disadvantage. That was the second major thing there. So advantage and disadvantage are something that we are going to also be working on adding, uh, you know, having a toggle over on the dice icon and uh, allowing you to roll that there within that interface. But then we are gonna be trying to get uh, some of the advantage and disadvantage icons that are already on the character sheet to allow you to roll by, uh, you know, interfacing with those elements as well. Uh, so advantage and disadvantage, the starting point of those things anyway, is going to be coming over time with advantage and disadvantage. We're going to be trying to add in more and more logic to do this as intelligently as we can, depending on feats you have, you know, all of those kind of elements. But uh, we're going to start by letting you toggle and letting you hopefully quickly grab those and use those from the places on the character sheet that are already calling those uh, conditions out. And then the third thing is we know that it takes uh, approximately eight or nine seconds right now for a die roll to resolve itself. And so we are going to be speeding that up. So we will get to a point at some point in the future where the animation and everything else is removed. And if all you want is number generation, you'll be able to do that. But the first step here is to tighten up some of the timings uh, and, and we're exploring a variety of ways to speed up the dice rolling. And uh, so those are kind of the three focus points that we're working through right now. Uh, in addition to a lot of other things that have been in progress for some time, to give you some exciting new options when it comes to the kinds of dice that you're able to use within D&D Beyond. So we're gonna share more about that very soon. Combat Tracker, uh, we are uh, parsing through feedback there, determining what is going to get us into a public beta release of that as well. So we'll keep you posted. And then I wanted to call out Roland the Family, The Slumbering Forest. Tonight at, uh, or this afternoon, depending on where you are in the world, or I guess it's evening, or afternoon, or morning, or dusk, or dawn, or midday, or wherever you are in the world, at 3 p.m. Pacific time today, we are going to have the finale of the slumbering forest. We're going to find out more about the Dusk Queen. This has been a blast playing with my son, uh, Kelly Knox and B. Dave Walters and their kids. Uh, it truly has been a really special experience and it is great family entertainment and families playing D&D together. And I love the uh, feedback that I've been seeing out there. People are really saying that it channels the Princess Bride and that is perfect because that's exactly uh, what our, our pitch was when we were going into this. And so uh, it's been a ton of fun. And the finale is tonight. If you haven't seen that show, if you have children who want to learn to play D&D and who want to just kind of get the feel of what that means and, and what that would look like, this is a great thing for you to go out there and find the VOD and catch up. Uh, this is the sixth and final episode. So it's something that is digestible, uh, you know, two hour sessions, six times. 
It's something that you can enjoy together. So definitely check that out. Really excited about, uh, I, I'm excited to see how it's going to turn out tonight. I, I have no idea. And my character, Barnaby, who is a fawn warlock, has, uh, he, he's in between, in between patrons right now. <laughs> so he, he's only got like a day or two left before his magic goes away forever. So uh, I hope that he's able to find somebody that will accept him 